so metaverse then. So I'm looping gaming into metaverse just because it was easier to do so, but there's so many, one of the key things I saw across all of our business units, so we have memory, system LSI, foundry, display, um, was everybody was looking at automotive and metaverse in different ways. So um, Sarah, I'm gonna put you on the spot first this time. From a metaverse perspective, you know, it's not the long sales cycle that you have from automotive because things are happening like this. So where do you see the semiconductor industry really getting involved or further involved, I guess I should say, for metaverse? So the, the metaverse is, is interesting. I think maybe I, I come with a little bit of skepticism, right? Because I, I remember living, when I previously worked for Siemens, uh, Second Life was big for a while. And, and, and everyone thought, all right, this is going to be a new space where, where, where we're going to create sort of a, a, a parallel world and we, things are going to be different than that world. And it sort of fizzled and died. And, and I've I'm, I'm been thinking, you know, what, what went wrong then that's different, that will be different now, right? And, and, and it seems like one piece that is interesting is the, the physical devices that we would use to interact with the metaverse, right? I think if that can change, if those can be substantially better, you know, the, 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 be it glasses or, or you know, handsets yep. or something, uh, then, then, then I think that the metaverse has, has some real appeal, but I think um, it feels like the, the interaction, the sort of user interfaces, I'd like to see them getting a whole lot better. Uh, and they are right now. Yeah, I agree. And that applies for gaming too, yeah. right? I think, you know, I love to see a step change yeah. in, in how we interact with content. Um, yeah. and, and I'm assuming that would be a new physical device. Yeah, absolutely. Dee, what about you for the metaverse? Oh, the metaverse. I could talk for hours about the metaverse because yes. what what isn't included in the metaverse, right? <laughs> it's everything. Um, uh, yeah, so I would say, um, you know, I think it's a misconception that, that people think metaverse and they think gaming because, um, uh, you know, ga well, actually, I would say that gaming has grown to be much more than what we, we have always thought it was. I mean, it's not just like playing on the console. It's become a, um, a social experience. People play games to connect to others. Um, and you know now there's cloud gaming and you can like access um, gaming entertainment in like a variety of different ways and so to me um when i think of the met of metaverse i um i think of people attending um you know, particularly with covid and and, and in-person events being so um uh, restricted um, people attending concerts, people getting together in a space that is, um, you know, like a, a separate reality. And I also think of, you know, I was on, I was um, on a trip a couple weekends ago, and um, there was, um, you know, a 13-year-old boy who, 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 a family friend who came along with us, and he had the Oculus Quest, and so he was using that, playing the games, showing it to his grandparents. His grandparents were like, we're going to get this um, uh, in the next few months. And then I can imagine him playing uh, games with his grandparents who live on the other side of the country, creating this like, um, you know, all, I would say, I mean, this digital reality where everybody can participate, where you can have, um, you know, uh, uh, you can have those social interactions without being in person. Um, and then there's, you know, there's a ver tons of different use cases in terms of like commerce and um uh you know industrial that i think it's i i see huge possibilities a huge growth for the metaverse in the future and you know we participated in it in terms of like just not just from like the edge devices but you know there's a ton of cloud um requirements that come along with it too that um it's going to be huge for uh, for samsung as a business yeah and it's funny you mentioned so my son has the quest and his dad travels a lot and so they'll be playing these games and it's his dad's in the game with him and they're taught they can hear i mean it's it's so fascinating from that perspective and when you talk about from the grandparents but like you said, I mean, he also, my, my kid has known the word latency since he was like six years old I'm, or, or he uses lag, 
he goes, mom, mom, I'm lagging. I'm la like, you know, and so I know that, that, you know, obviously the semiconductors and memory and all that kind of stuff impact that. And I had to learn all this stuff about it myself. Uh, Celeste, what are your thoughts from a metaverse uh, perspective? Well, I think, you know, the metaverse also uh, um, will offer uh, eventually um, uh, an opportunity to showcase um, some of the value behind machine learning and um, how disparate bits of information about people and place and purchasing behavior and preferences and entertainment all kind of come together um, for, you know, curated experiences um, that uh, bring communities of people to together. Hopefully it'll bring um, AI for good as well. So there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, and, you know, when you're able to transport people into a new place um, or new experiences, there's a lot of opportunity for learning there too. So um, hopefully uh, we'll see we'll see new areas of education and um, human to human inter interaction. And um, yeah, that's that's what I mean with uh, machine learning opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. Bridget, what about you? Um, I was just I was thinking along the same lines as Celeste with like the educational opportunities I think are amazing and um, I feel like we're just at the beginning of what is just you know the possibilities for it are are endless with what we can do with you know AI and machine learning now it's like it seemed like it was so far away before and now it's like it's accessible to you know, so many people, it's not this like far off, you know, dream. So, um, I, yeah, I don't think it's going away. And I think it's a huge opportunity for, uh, Samsung to be, you know, get in, you know, to be involved, like right at the beginning. So. Sonia, what about you? Yeah, I am agree with the Sarah, how to make the device more convenient, user friendly, more for the reality. Uh, we talk about crest, but uh, you have to wear the very bulky, you know, headset to play it around. So, yeah. so that's also the area display is working on. We want to, you know, minimize uh, you know, the size and uh, with a higher memory and a uh, processor speed, those uh, things. So I think I, I think does it have a lot of potential not only for gaming but also education, even medical industry, but uh, yes. how to make the the device to be easy to use, that would be yeah. a very important thing. Which is that also the very good opportunity for Samsung to put it all together, for the consumer. Okay, get right on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I've seen I've seen like I agree like for me whether it's the the smaller glasses or whatever at some point the device is may become your phone, you know, where it's not, so you aren't having to do one or the other, you're in there and you're actually doing that. Yeah. It's going to be really interesting, especially from the display side. Mm -hmm. 